As much as we'd like to focus on creating and managing threads and work packets, we tend to ignore the biggest, hardest problem in threading memory. My name is Cole McCandless, and while threading and memory have a long, complicated history in programming, there are some specific nuances on Android that you need to be aware of. You gotta remember that memory in computing isn't really thread safe. Uh, when two threads are operating on the same block of memory, weird things happen. I mean, you can get memory contention problems with read-write access order, ABA problems, rips in the fabric of space-time. Okay, maybe not Maybe not the last one. But anyhow, fixing these means restricting memory access from threads using locking, which is a whole separate video series that we're not going to get into right now. But most important to understand is that Android isn't immune to these problems. For the most part, the same techniques you use to deal with these issues on other platforms can be applied here too. But there are a few specific cases that you need to be aware of. Let's start with the fact that by design, UI objects are not thread safe. Uh, UI objects are expected to be created, used, and destroyed all on the UI thread and not guaranteed to behave properly on any other threads. Trying to modify or even reference them on other threads can throw exceptions, cause silent failures, crashes, and just general weirdness. Uh, in fact, just holding a direct reference to a UI object on a worker thread can be a problem. For example, your work object may contain a reference to a view, but before your work completes on the worker thread, the view is removed from the view hierarchy on the main thread. So what do you do here? I mean, you can't trust any of the properties of that view since the data has changed, and updating those properties doesn't really mean anything since it's not part of the hierarchy anymore and won't be drawn to the screen. And this gets crazy really quick. Now remember, views contain references to their owning activity. I mean, we did a whole video on how leaking those views can cause all sorts of memory problems. But this gets even worse when threading is involved. If an activity is destroyed, but there still exists a threaded block of work that references it, the activity won't get collected until that work finishes. So if you kick off some work and the user rotates the screen three times in a row before that work completes, you could end up with three instances of that activity object resident in memory. Memory. And to be clear, it's not just explicit references to UI objects that you need to worry about. You also have to be cautious of implicit references as well. Uh, check out this very common, seen all the time coding pattern in Android apps. Uh, you've got some threading object that's declared as an inner class of an activity. The problem here is that the async task object now has an implicit reference to the enclosing activity and will keep that reference until the work object has been destroyed. The result is the same problem. Until this work completes, the activity stays around in memory. And by the way, this type of pattern also leads to common types of crashes seen in Android apps. Uh, some block of threading work is kicked off, but the user hits back or does something else to change the topmost activity. Later, when the threaded work completes, it tries to make updates to a state that's no longer valid. The result is a dialog box notifying me that an app I haven't used for 10 minutes has crashed, which is kind of awkward for everybody. The takeaway here is that you shouldn't hold references to any types of UI specific objects in any of your threading scenarios, which leads to the natural question, how are we supposed to update the UI from threaded work? The trick here is to force the top level activity or fragment to be the sole system responsible for updating the UI objects. Uh, for example, when you'd like to kick off some work, create a work record that pairs a view with some update function. When that block of work is finished, it submits the results back to the activity using a, an intent or a run on UI thread call. The activity can then call the update function with the new information, or if the view isn't there, just drop the work altogether. And if the activity that issued the work was destroyed, then the new activity won't have a reference to any of this and it'll just drop the work too. See, no crashes, no memory leaks, just pure clean fun. Now, if you ever want a deeper look at how threading and memory are working together, make sure to check out the powerful new tools inside of Android Studio, which just get an awesome revamp as of version 2.0. The deeper you go into Android performance, the more you realize how important memory is on this platform, which is why you should check out the rest of the memory videos on the Android Performance Patterns playlist. And don't forget to check out our Google Plus community as well. So keep calm, profile your code, and always remember, perf matters.